Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on functions. Our key concept is that of a function, and a function is a relation in which each element of the domain is paired with exactly one element of the range. And if we notice in the mapping here, negative 3 in the domain matches the 5, 0 matches the 3, 2 matches the 2, and 4 matches the negative 1. Each element of the domain is paired with exactly one element of the range. And here in the graph is an example of a function as well. So our first example simply asks us to determine whether each relation is a function and explain. Well, in our mapping here, we have in the domain negative 2 matching negative 8, 0 matching 0, 2 matching 8, and 4 matching 16. So we need to ask ourselves, does each element of the domain match and pair with exactly one element? Well, looks like it pairs with one element to me. So what we can say is, it's a function. And for, ex for our explanation, let's use the definition, each element of the domain is paired with exactly one element in the range. And that's what it takes to be a function. What about b? We have negative 7 going to negative 12, negative 4 with 9, 2 with 3, and 5 with 0. Well, negative 7 to negative 12, negative 4 to negative 9, 2 to 3, and 5 to 0, each element of the domain is also paired with e or 1 exactly for the range. And so for this, we could also write function. And our explanation is going to be exactly the same. Each element of the domain is paired with exactly one element of the range. Now both of those examples represented functions. But what about an example that does not? Well, just real quick, if we had the relation 2, 1, 3, negative 2, and 2, negative 2. If we just did a quick mapping with the domain and the range, our domain, we have 2 and 3, and our range, we have 1 and negative 2. Well, the 2 goes to the 1. Not a problem there. The 3 goes to the negative 2. Not a problem there. But then this 2 also goes to the negative 2. And that is a deal breaker when it comes to functions. We can't have a domain going to two different ranges. That's where the problem exists. The problem exists with this 2. So for this one, it's actually not a function simply because the 2 in the domain is paired with 1 and negative 2 in the range. Now, discrete functions and continuous functions. A discrete function is considered a graph that consists of points that are not connected
compared to a continuous function, that is a function graphed with a line or smooth curve. Discrete function, a graph that consists of points that are not connected. Continuous function, a function graphed with a line or smooth curve. And now for example two. There are three lunch periods at a school. During the first period, 352 students eat. During the second period, 304 students eat. During the third period, 391 students eat. So A, make a table showing the number of students for each of the three lunch periods. Well, we have our table here, so we can go one period, period two, period three. For our number of students, in period one, we had 352. In period two, we had 304. And in period three, we had 391. B, determine the domain and range of the function. Well, for our domain, we're going to treat those as our period. So D is going to equal, in our braces, 1, 2, and 3. As for our range, it's going to be our number of students, which was 352, 304, and 391. C. Write the data as a set of ordered pairs, then graph the data. Where our domain are our x's, so those are going to go first. We're going to have 1, 352, 2, 304, and 3, 391. And when we go to graph that, 1, 352 is just above the 350. 2, 304 is just above the 300. And 3, 391 is going to be below the 400, just a little bit, like this. And for D, state whether the function is discrete or continuous, and explain your reasoning. Remember, a discrete function is a graph that consists of points that are not connected. A continuous function is a function graphed with a line or smooth curve. Well, this is a graph that consists of points that are not connected, so our answer for this is going to be discrete function. And for our explanation, let's just go to the definition. The points are not connected. In any of your explanations, if you can just go back to the definition, you'll be pretty good to go. Now what makes something a function? We can use something called the vertical line test to determine whether or not something is a function. So if I just have a quick little coordinate plane here, and I were just to draw one of these guys in, what the vertical line test says. If a vertical line intersects the graph more than once, then the graph is not a function. Otherwise, the relation is a function. So here I have a nice blue vertical line. And if I just take this line and slide it across the graph, at any given time, it is only hitting one point on the graph. And since it only hits one point at the graph at a given time, that is going to make this here a function. What about something that looks a bit like this? When I try to do the vertical line test for this, coming across the graph, and you can do this with a pencil on your paper, notice I am hitting this relation 
in two different spots at the same time. And since I'm hitting this at two different spots at the same time, this is going to be not a function. So with the vertical line test, if you can run a vertical line over a relation and only hit one point at a time, then you're a function. If you hit it more than once, it's not a function. So in example three, we're being asked to determine whether x equals negative two represents a function. Well, let's make a table. When x is negative two, y is going to be pretty much, well, could be one. When x is negative two, y could be zero. When x is negative two, y could be negative one. When x is negative two, y could be negative two. In other words, when x is negative two, y is one, zero, negative one, negative two. And if I connect these with a line, I get a vertical line for x equals negative two. Well, if I bring in now a vertical line and bring this across, I failed the vertical line test because I'm actually hitting the entire relation at one time. Remember, I can only hit one point at a time, and here I'm hitting all of them. And so, because of that, we're going to say that x equals negative 2 is not a function. And for our concept summary, we have the representations of a function. We have the table, the mapping, an equation, or the graph. Now what is function notation? Well this is simply equations that are functions can be written in this form. Because not all equations are functions. But if we had the equation y equals 3x minus 8, the function notation for that would be f of x equals 3x minus 8. Now it is good to know that the domain is going to be represented by the x's and the range is going to be represented by the f of x's. And again, this is read f of x. Now, to find function values, such as, in the example below, f of 4, we're going to put that value 4 in for the x. So in A, to find f of 4, we'll start with the original function. And the way we write this out is to say, all right, f of 4 is going to equal 3 times 4 minus 4. So this is going to equal 12 minus 4, which is simply 8. Then, for f of negative 5 and b, we'll start with the original function again, f of x equals 3x minus 4. And so f of negative 5 is going to equal 3 times negative 5 minus that 4. 
which is going to be negative 15 minus 4. Now, if you need to keep change opposite in order to solve this question, please do. Or just know that this is going to be negative 19. Now, a nonlinear function, let me think linear, line, non, not. So, a function with a graph. that is not a straight line is an example of a nonlinear function. Now, in our example, if h of t equals 1,248 minus 160t plus 16t squared, find each value. Okay, so in A, let's start with the original function h of t equals 1,248 minus 160t plus 16t squared. Well, h of 3 is going to equal 1,248 minus 160 times 3 plus 16 times, and this is then going to be 3 squared. So as we solve this, 1,248 minus 160 times 3 is 480, plus 3 squared was 9. 16 times 9 is 144. And so as we take 1,248 minus 480 plus 144, we're going to get a value of 912. Now what about example B? We're looking for h of 2z. Well, h of 2z is going to once again equal 1,248 minus 160 times 2z plus 16 times 2z squared. All right. Well... Let's break this down a little bit. This is going to be 1,248 minus, now for the 160 times 2z, let's take 160 times 2, which is 320z. And the next part gets a little more complicated. This is going to be 16 times. Now, when we do 2z squared, that's the same thing as 2z times. 2z, which is just 4z squared. Then, we're left with 1,248 minus 320z plus that 16 times 4 is 64z squared. And that's actually all we can do with this. 1,248 minus 320z plus 64z squared is our value. And that is it for this lesson on functions. Good luck.